right. Okay. Okay, back, midweek back session. This is the one that doesn't include deadlifts, but includes rack pulls at the very end. So essentially to finish off the back completely. Now, as you'll see, many of the things that we're doing today will be supported and non-supported. They'll be thickness focused, they'll be width focused. I don't have a specific day that I focus on thickness or width. I just literally have two back days Whatever I do on the midweek back session, I won't do on the weekend back session. The weekend back session is always deadlift focused, and then of course I'll train back afterwards. But today, as you'll see, a little bit of kind of activation work, not fully pre-exhaust. You'll not see me taking it to complete failure, close to failure, but not completely. Um, as I don't really like taking things at the very start of the session to complete failure, just because I kind of have a little bit of fear that it'll take away a little bit of energy that I will need for my first kind of few working sets on the, the bigger movements. So I'll not take this to complete failure, activate, get a bit of blood in around the lats, and then it means I can connect a little bit better with the obviously starting exercises. Now, like I said, no deadlifts today, so we're gonna actually start on a single arm um, hammer strength iso pull down. I believe we can get on it, so we will start on that, and then pretty much what'll happen from there on in is, I'll go by how I feel, there's loads of back kit here in Ultraflex Durham, so again, we're never going to be stuck for that side of things, which I am very grateful for. But apart from that, guys, um, welcome back to another video, and let's get on with this midweek back session. That's, if that's one thing with something like a single arm iso pull down, regardless of going into the partial reps, as you'll see, I'm not getting the lat fully short, which doesn't mean that I'm not working it. My goal is still to drive my elbow as far as I can and get it as close to, to essentially my back pocket or my hips as possible. And that'll mean that regardless of how short I'm getting it, I'm still taking that lat as far as it can possibly go. 
So as you'll see like by the back end of my set there, there was no chance in hell I was getting my elbow all the way down to, to my lower lat or my hip or my back pocket. However, the goal was still there to drive my elbow as hard as possible. So that's something to take. Just because you can't get your elbow all the way down, doesn't mean your set's finished. You can still push it a wee bit further. Hey! 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 Oh. Okay then. Okay then. Oh man, go on. Okay, come on, Kev. Ooh. 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 Hey. That's when I know, that's when I know my legs are, my legs are getting bigger because on prep, on prep I'm sure I had it like down here and I could squeeze in so easy. Whereas I'm now three weeks into my off season and I, I can't even get under there. I'm getting too big. <laughs> Okay. Ah. 
Yes. Ooh. 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 Hey. 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 Oh man, alive. Fucker. Okay. Come on, Kev. Up. Yes. Boom. 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 Fuck, I'm gonna drop that. Oh, come on then. Come on then. Oof. Ooh. 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 Oh man, I'll... Uh, oh, okay, one more fucking drop. Oh, 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 hey, 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 hey. Oh man, as you'll see, I've not got a, I've not got my book with me to write a story in after every single set. What I've got is a pad to lean on because I'm absolutely fucked. <sighs> Oh. 
Oh man. I'm looking over in the hardcore corner because that's where I do my rack pulls every single week. And I believe we can get on the rack. So that's pretty much my main kind of part of my back workout done. I might finish on some straight arm pull downs or pull overs, whatever you want to call them, just to completely finish off the back after rack pulls. However, the main purpose of my rack pulls at the very end, and because I'm not pulling off the floor, we're essentially targeting the lats or contracting the lats, hitting the lats, whatever you want to classify it as, from the get-go of a rack pull. So the initial pull, instead of pulling from the floor, relying on leg drive and pulling the shoulders first, we're staying on the lats from the start to finish. Again, on something like a rack pull as well as you can really focus on a nice hard contraction in your back in the lockout. So it's something just to incorporate in at the very end. I would never put them in at the start because they're obviously a movement that you can go super heavy on. And if you put them in at the start when you're really fresh, you've got all the energy under the sun, you're going to be lifting fucking heavy. And it just means that it's going to tax the absolute hell out of you. You're not going to be able to perform efficiently throughout a back session. And at the end of the day, it's not really going to give you that many benefits. If you're thinking about putting a rack pull in, put it in at the end. If you're thinking about putting something like a rack pull in and you want to put it in at the start, deadlift, pull off the floor. But we'll finish in rack pulls. Oh. It feels too light to go for too many reps. That's one thing you'll see on rack pulls as much as you'll see it on deadlifts, you'll see it on my squats, you'll pretty much see it on all my bigger movements. I'm only, once I'm getting heavier, I'm down to one rep, two rep max. I'll do four plates next, one rep. Purely just down to the fact from an energy standpoint, I'm not giving out too much in the sets that don't necessarily count. And unless I was doing pyramid sets up the way, that's, the only time that you'll ever see me doing reps, 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 reps. And to be fair, that'll only happen on more so smaller movements. Biggest ones would maybe be something down the lines of a pull down or a low row that might be non-supported. However, on these bigger movements, such as a rack pull, if I'm going to like, say my top end working set is 240 kilo, five and a half plates aside. If I'm doing four plates, four and a half plates for 10 reps, I could easily do 10 reps, but my central nerve system, my energy that I've got left for the rest of the session would be slowly dying off because I would be giving it out in warm-ups when my main goal is my top end set, especially on something like this. As you'll see, obviously on the smaller movements, I'm not exactly doing top and back offs, but on the bigger movements where they top heavy loading sets that I like to go really fucking heavy on for a lot of reps for that matter, where they count the most, we're making sure that we've got all the energy for them sets and we're not putting it into the warm-up. So that's why you'll see me pulling down to just singles. Make it light then. Oh, man alive, four plates feeling like fuck all. That's when it starts getting scary. People always ask me, what sort of music do I listen to? Do I listen to new, modern day music? Everybody knows that I listen to Masters of Hardcore, but we listen to stuff that's 12 years old because the old, the old sort of hardcore stuff will never be beaten, regardless how many times they probably try and beat it, unless it's somebody like Angerfest, then Angerfest usually tops it, but Regardless, we still listen to 12 years old Angerfest because it's always the best. Oh, 
Oh, six is on. Six is fucking on. <laughs> fucking come on, Kef. Dirty nation. Come on, motherfucker. Come on. Trash this place. You make this fucking light. No fucking choice, Kef. No fucking choice. Shit. Okay. Motherfucker. <laughs> I'll take that. Happy with that. Six for six. Last week I done two forty. Two forty did I? That's a lie. That was the week before. And it almost broke me. It literally almost broke me. Just like deadlifts did. Just like squats did. Just like literally every movement post prep now I obviously go through a very severe peak week as you guys would have seen obviously I took you guys through my essential run through my full peak my three day deplete my carb up my water load the water cut and that was all within the space of one week so obviously we'd done Monday Tuesday Wednesday deplete the highest day of water was thirsty highest day of carbohydrates was thirsty Friday Saturday Obviously it was still very high, but started pulling it. Always post prep, I suffer just down to severe dehydration. My joints, they're just not ready to obviously come back in and go balls to the wall. But it's just so weird and it's so baffling because a week out, I was doing like 280 triples off the floor. And then a week post prep or a week into my off season, a week post show, Obviously it was my deadlift day, my first deadlift day post show. I came in and I'd done 260 for a single and it almost snapped me in half like, to the point where it wasn't hard, it was just really sore. And it's been the same every single year because since I've started doing this kind of protocol of peak week in terms of the deplete and the carb up, the water load, the water cut, I've always suffered. And it's always been one of them things, but we're now three weeks post show or just cruising over that three week marker and things are starting to fire again. Things are starting to feel a good bit normal again. For example, last deadlift session, triple 280 kilograms again. Felt very good, probably could have, uh, probably could have squeezed out five, but they, the last two would have been the sore ones. So now that I know that I've got a really good three out of the way, I can take five this week. Obviously Saturday, whenever my deadlift day comes, I'll look to take the five and then it means that we're, we're gradually working our way back up. Exact same as something like this. I done the 240, almost broke me, made the, the sensible choice last week, done 220, took I think 10 or 12 reps, felt very good. I was able to go up a plate today, I was feeling so much better, and again guys, taking on board that this is post back, I've trained, this is just at the end of the session, the goal is purely to finish off my back completely, so that was why again the, the focus was on dead stopping it, getting that initial pull on the lats from the start to the finish, and just making sure that I could take a, an efficient set. I'm gonna do a back off set. I'm gonna try and box off between 12 and 15, but I'm gonna come down to literally just four plates, take a nice and easy set, and then that'll be me pretty much done. There's no reason to kill myself in another set because the main work's been done. But everything's picking back up now. Train legs at the start of the week, barbell squats back in at the start of the session, but it's just one of them things that we've got to deal with. I could have let the, the past three weeks training, I, I could have dwelled on it a lot and let it get to me. But would I have got out the back end of that and started training the way I'm training? Probably not if I let it get to me. So it's just taking on board that situations like that, whenever we come out of it, 
potentially could be out of our control, but the only thing that's in our control is continuing to do the do, and that's just getting the work done, even if it's not satisfying, because don't get me wrong, guys, I know what pulling seven and a half plates off the floor for reps is like, that's satisfying. Pulling six plates and feeling like it's almost gonna break me, if I let that get to me a lot, I probably wouldn't have deadlifted the following session. So you've just got to take that on board. Always control what's in your control. But if it's not in your control, move the fuck on and just get on with it. But we're nearly finished. Rack pull's pretty much done. A little bit of arms and we'll be finished. Oh, I'm happy with today's session. It's been a good one. Take that. Right, one more, one more. Alternating, good old alternating dumbbell bicep curl. And then we're finito. Come on, Kef. Make it come. Oh, yes. Oh. 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 So guys, that's another one done. Another one in the books. Another one boxed off for another week, my midweek back session. I'm very happy with that. Again, like I said to you after the rack pulls, it was something that, it's taken me a few weeks to get back into this kind of groove of things not feeling too sore. And things are starting to fire again, which just makes, makes me happy because I'm getting that old feeling back that I had a few weeks prior to obviously me competing. So. Getting that feeling back, knowing my food's up nice and high, 
moving deeper into off season now. Like I'm only three weeks into my off season, but just knowing that I'm moving deeper in with good food and my energy's back. I'm feeling a lot fuller. I'm not feeling as sore. It gets me excited because we're starting off this off season in a brand new position. Like back in 2020, when I went in my off season, I was struggling to pull like 260 off the floor for one. Now I'm at the point where I'm like dead stop tripling 280 kilograms a week out and in earn my off season, which gives me that kind of confidence that I know there's going to be some big heavy lifts. So obviously throughout this, this off season, there's going to be some big heavy sets. There's going to be unknown territory just around the corner. And that excites me more than ever. But apart from that guys, that is all from today. Successful back session taken. I'm feeling good. We're three weeks deep into the off season now. So expect a lot more content throughout this off season phase. Again, if there's anything that you guys want to see, don't hesitate to drop some comments down below um, and, and let me know what you want to see. Food challenges, food videos, training videos, informative videos. You guys know that I'm not really an informative YouTuber that likes to take you to school. I'm not going to come on and lecture you. I'm not going to come on and tell you how to train optimally or efficiently. I'm going to give you guys an insight into how I train as a natural bodybuilder and how I've always trained from the start of my training career to, to now. And I'm now obviously over eight years in, approaching nine years, potentially even, I could even be over nine years. I'm not even sure what it is. But um, I'm here to show you how I train. I'm here to bring entertainment. Of course, value is always going to be part of them. You're always going to get that from my kind of, my um, standpoint. But apart from that, don't forget to drop the video a like for me, guys. And subscribe to the channel if you're new because we're still on the road to 10K subs. And I'll see you all in the next video.